Sadhguru, at the beginning today you said that uh, the human is one where uh, the source of creation has a greater presence. Now why does it have to be so? Is it just nature's ploy, existence ploy, um, a play where we are all just some kind of software programs designed for self-annihilation with some support systems? Why some people have the longing, some people don't? And why some people with longing find the right place or the right avenues to get their longings fulfilled? What is the secret behind all this? For the first part of the question, why are you asking me? I didn't create this damn place. I am only trying to create a solution. <laughs> I didn't create the problem. <laughs> so, is this all apply for people, the spiritual people to run their business? Do they have some kind of a deal with the creator that he keeps people in such a turmoil that these people can run their show? possible. <laughs> it's just that uh, you are asking this with a certain anguish attached to it. So I'm just trying to play it a little bit. You know the cat and the mouse game? They say, Illegal prana sangata bekka ki chellata. What it means is, for the rat, it's a life and death question. For the cat, it's a game. <laughs> so, <laughs> it all depends which one you are. So, uh, why this whole thing is made like this? Is it some kind of a conspiracy between the spiritual gurus and the creator? No. It's all conspiracy from the other side. We are trying to beat the conspiracy. We don't have a deal with the conspirator, but we have made friends with him. Now that we have made friends with him, we can get him to open the door or we have found the keys ourselves. Even without his permission we started opening the door these days. <laughs> Now why in one person there is a longing, in another there isn't? There is no such thing. In everybody there is a longing. In everybody there is a longing to be little more than what he is right now, isn't it? In everybody there is such a longing, that is a spiritual longing. It's just that most people do not recognize it as such till a certain amount of pain or suffering or old age or the constant threat of death enters their life, till then they will not recognize that longing for what it is. They will go on painting all kinds of pictures. Using that longing, they are painting a million different kinds of pictures on a daily basis. They think it's about money. They want to fool themselves that it's think about… thinking that it's about a man or a woman. They know very well it's not so. But they like to keep the game going and keep the game going and keep the game going forever. They think it's all about a new house. They think it's about a new job. They think it's about a promotion. They think it's about wealth. Not that they really think so. They just like to play this game. Everybody knows that none of these things will fulfill them. They know it very well, isn't it? But they still continue to play the game. 
So why the game is so difficult is, the situation is like this. Shankaran Pillai and his wife were sleeping in the night. The wife thought she heard some noises downstairs, she thought there must be a burglar. And she said, hey, are you awake? Shankaran Pillai said, no. <laughs> That's why you can't wake them up, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> They're really asleep. It's very easy to wake them. Gently you can either kiss them awake if they are gentle people or you can put ice cold water, a bucket of ice cold water and wake them. But the problem is they are awake and they pretend to be asleep. Now you have to coax them not to pretend. You know it's difficult. You know it's difficult. That's why it seems so difficult, not otherwise. people were really asleep, it would be very easily to awaken them. They are awake but they are pretending to be asleep. Now if you… see, a man who is pretending to be asleep, if you roll him over, he'll sleep this side. You make, make him sit up, he'll sit… he'll sleep sitting. You make him stand up, he'll sleep standing. When he is determined not to wake up, then it's takes lots of work, that's the foolish work we're doing in the name of spirituality. To wake people up who are already awake but who like to pretend that they're asleep. Otherwise, why this going on and on? One satsang is enough, isn't it? Just one satsang is enough. Why another one, another one, another one? Because one satsang you roll them over like this, then they sleep this side. Next satsang, okay that didn't work, you roll them like this, they'll sleep that in that position. In every new position they will sleep. So you don't let them sit in any position, you keep them moving, 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 moving to a point of frustration where they're gap, okay this damn man won't let me sleep anyway, what the hell? Let me come awake. This is the way fools will wake up. But the intelligent should wake up the moment they know they're awake, they must open their eyes and see. Those who are eager for life, those who are looking forward to the day, the moment they're awake they will get up and come out. Those who are not looking forward to the day. If sun comes up, they want to deny it by the blanket, isn't it? <laughs> So that's why the spiritual process are designed like this. You like it or you don't like it, five thirty in the mo five o'clock in the morning, get up and cold water and sit down and do everything that you have to do. No, I don't like it, I don't like it, it doesn't matter you don't like it, just do it. You're asleep, it doesn't matter. You still walk around and do everything. If you do this for some time, then you will realize, what's the point pretending? Anyway, they'll make me do all these things. then it will not be worth pretending. You are creating a whole range of illusions for yourself. Life should disillusion you somewhere, it will. The sooner it does, it's good. When life doesn't, a guru tries to hasten the process of disillusioning you. Do not understand disillusion as a negative process. Disillusioning means destroying your illusions, isn't it? If you get disillusioned, is it a positive thing or a negative thing? <laughs> That's a whole problem with life, isn't it? If your dreams break and you come down to reality, that's when you struggle most and suffer most, isn't it so? Yes? Isn't it so? 
If everything that was an illusion broke and it landed you in reality, you must be joyful. But just the reverse is happening because you're awake and asleep, that's the problem. If you were asleep, there was no problem. If you're fully awake, it's absolutely wonderful. You're awake but you pretend to be asleep. This is a serious problem.